Okay, this is Mr. Anderson for Math 130 Statistics at Kellogg Community College. Uh, the third video that wraps up our work in Chapter 2 uh, talks about some of the different types of bar graphs and uh, horizontal and vertical on the Pareto charts. And the uh, horizontal bar graph uh, is when you take the data, and we're looking at some exercise data and how many calories burned per minute, um, and we organize those on the y-axis, these are the categories, and then the data uh, is going to go by ones all the way up to the 15 calories per minute burned uh, by running uh, 7.5 miles, or 7 miles per, it says MPG miles per gallon, but it really should be MPH miles per hour. Uh, but you can see that there are uh, gaps between each of the bars, and also uh, you will notice that uh, we put the highest one on the top there. Uh, the book will do that in most of the examples. The, uh, the uh, Pareto chart is a vertical bar graph with no spaces between. And uh, just like before, we kind of go from high to low. So on the left-hand side, we have running, then cross-country skiing, tennis, golf, biking, and walking. Uh, the other example that you can do by yourself, pause the video and then you know play to see if you did it right. This is a number of roller coasters by continent. And we organize those uh, high to low again on the uh, horizontal bar graph. And on the Pareto chart, we need to organize those, um, the, the categories on the x-axis and the number of coasters on the y-axis. Uh, the only real trick to these is that you're going to want to make take a look at your minimums and maximums. You can see that we had to go by hundreds on the y-axis, uh, and on the previous example, the x-axis had to go by hundreds to get to the maximum. All right, the next chart is going to be the plot over time, or the time series. We're looking at airline accidents uh, from 1997 to 2007, and I made my y-axis will always be the thing that we're measuring. This is in the case the number of accidents, and the x-axis will be our time. Since it's a plot over time or a time series, time will always be your x-axis. And you can see that uh, we have dots connected, uh, and the steepness of the dots show the greater amount of change between year and year. If there was ever a year missing, we would uh, connect, like let's say, for example, 2001 was missing, we would just connect the dot from 2000 to 2002. And then this right here is the uh, public debt in billions of dollars per family. And uh, this is the way that I chose to draw, to draw it. Um, I went by um, billion uh, debt in, um, it, should, it says in thousands, but it should say in billions of dollars right here. Or if, <laughs> so we have six thousands in billions. It's, um, it's, the way that I did it too is a little misleading because you can see I started at zero and I could have went up to, um, you know, I, I could have started it instead of zero. I could have started at six and made this look a lot more steep. And that's what um, a lot of uh, people do to make um, uh, a staggering trend as this is, um, you know, 6,000 billion or a trillion dollars here. Uh, you can see that the trillions of dollars of debts has doubled in this amount of time, so that could be, you know, drawn very uh, steeply. And there are sections in this book that talk about um, how... Um, how you can make statistics seem a little bit more deceptive, and I suggest you look at that in the book. Now, the last chart that we're going to do here is we are going to do the stem and leaf plot. Now, the stem and leaf plot uh, is is a little bit trickier, so what I'm going to do is help build this from scratch, and um, what I have here is at the top, I have presidential ages at inauguration. Um, it's helpful to know your minimum and maximum. Uh, and what makes the stem and leaf plot, you know, um, unique is that you get to see all the data. But one of the problems with the stem and leaf plot is that it can take a long time to draw. Now, the reason why stem and leaf plot is given its name is this is like the tens column is the stem of the tree. It's the trunk. And we will put the bigger numbers, uh, like for example, this is 40s, 50s, and 60s. We'll put the bigger numbers at the bottom because that the, the base of the trunk is bigger at the tree, the bottom of the tree. Now the leaves are going to be the ones column. Now to really, uh, uh, you know, it's, this is just an option in the book, and I would suggest to list your numbers in order, uh, sort your numbers, but since there's a lot of data here, and 
it would just be a little time consuming to show me sorting all these numbers. Uh, I would scan to see what's my lowest 40, uh, lowest data point in the 40s, and I would see that's 42, so I put a 2 there. And then I would scan through the data and see what's the next um, lowest 40s, and I notice there's a 43. And then there's uh, a 46, another 46, a 47, another 47, a 48, and two 49s. And that brings me to the end of all the 40s. So you see where I have a stem and leaf plot is basically made by taking all the ones from my 40s and listing them. They have to be in order from smallest to largest, as um, you see from 42, 43, 46, 46, and the 50s. Um, this is where, since I've actually done the problem out before uh, recording this here, I notice that this is going to get exceedingly long. And that's where I would suggest that if you don't have a big range or difference in your tens column, you can decide to rewrite the problem like with uh, two fours, which is between 40 and 44, and this would be 45 through 49. And this is two fifties, and this is two sixties. And therefore, my stem has a is going to break basically the distance of this in half. Now what I'm going to show you is if you continue to do uh, a stem and leaf plot with just 40s, 50s, and 60s, you see how long it would get. But if you do, and if you break this down by fives instead of by tens, you can go 40, 42, 43, 46, 46, 47, 47, 48, 49, 49. And then when we get to the 50s, this is still going to be exceedingly long, but try to also line up your numbers underneath the numbers above them. That way you can see, you know, uh, the differences in, you know, in distribution there. So um, I'm going to continue this on, 52, 52. And there are five 54-year-old presidents at inauguration. All right, and then now we go to the 55 range between 55 and 59 and then we go to 50, a couple 56's some 57's and then a 58 now we're going into the 60's now since you have a 60 you'll put a 0 there for 60 and a couple 61's and a 62 and some 64's Oops, I put one too many fours there. Sorry about that. And then the oldest presidents at inauguration, a 65-year-old, 68-year-old, and 69-year-old. Okay, so now we have uh, data right here for non-fat-free calories and salad dressings. And you'll notice that all this data is in the hundreds. Um, our minimum here is 100 and our maximum here is 190. Now, because the minimum and maximum is pretty well spread out, our stem is going to start with 100, so the 10 slot is, you know, 10, and then we have 11 all the way through 19, because that 19 is going to stand for 190. Now, um, just to give you an idea, if I went through the list, I would diligently find that there were five 100s, and there was two 110s and a 105. Or, sorry, <laughs> two 110s and one 115. Now, I've also completed this, so I have um, a, the finished answer right here, and that finished answer shows all the different... Uh, types of, or basically the entire list of all the fast food calories, or the uh, <laughs> fat-free calories in the salad dressings. Um, if you were going to describe the distribution, what you'd have to do is turn this sideways and treat it like um, uh, a bar graph or a histogram. And then you could talk about skewed left, skewed right, and symmetric. Uh, this one's a little bit tougher to see. It's, it's a little bit more skewed to the right than it is symmetric or uh, skewed to the left. But um, that's how you would use uh, the stem and leaf plots to describe your 
uh, to uh, get a good dis description of the data. So that ends Chapter 2 in, in pretty much three videos or one class session. Uh, if you have any questions, please email. Thank you.